Hello guys, how's it going? Alex Grampion here. I hope you're well. Today uh, we got a job on the TT. Uh, this is Mark III, a 2 litre TDI uh, 2015 plate. We got rear decent pads that we're going to be doing today. Uh, as per usual, links for the tools and the parts will be in the description below. Uh, for the best prices, you obviously always make sure you check your reg to make sure you get the correct ones because you can get this in, I'm pretty sure there's a few different sizes. And the same for the pads, there's different options. So for this job, we're going to need a diagnostic tool, uh, which is what I've got here. Today I'm going to be using my new diagnostic tool from Autel. Uh, so this one is mk 808 STS. I'll put that in the description below as well. It's a brilliant tool. Uh, so the reason we're going to need the diagnostic tool today is to release the electronic handbrake uh, so you can wind the calipers back in. Uh, so you will need to activate that and make sure you've got enough battery there for it to work. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to give you all the spec as well today. So if there's something you're interested in, tune in guys and let's get started. So get the wheel off. Right, so this bit is nice and easy, uh, literally get a screwdriver behind there but get your hand in front of it so it doesn't uh, flick you in the face, pull it off, sometimes they can be a bit tight in there so you just have to apply a bit of pressure and work its way out, uh, I usually clean them up and put a bit of copper grease uh, when I reinstall them. So at this point you can take the caps off as well. Right, so the sliders, uh, they are Allen Q7, um, so I got the adapter for the right chip but I'm also going to need the 10 mil. Uh, spanner, I got the Draper ratchet ones uh, because there's a brake pipe in the way so you can't really get a ratchet on it so I'm going to get the spanner on there and get that undone and the same for the bottom one I'll show you in a second what I've done here Now before uh, you're going to compress the calipers in, you need to make sure that in your brake fluid bottle under the bonnet you got enough empty space in there for the brake fluid to retract because when you're going to start pushing the pistons back in, uh, you're going to push the brake fluid back into the bottle, which is normal. Uh, so just make sure you got enough room in there. Alright, so just got a light for you. As you can see the slider is out, so that's enough to clear it. Exactly the same at the bottom slider, that one's out as well. Uh, so like I said, at this point we're ready um, to connect to the car and release the handbrake using the diagnostic tool and then we should be able to slide the caliper off. Right guys, so the OBD socket is located there where you can see the green light, it's all plugged in. I've uh, got my diagnostic tool here, ignition is on. Right, so the tool is on and connected, I uh, went into the Audi and I got the hot functions there. So it should come up with electronic parking brake which is this one here. So select that option, go to the brakes. So it gives you the replace brake pads operating guide. Uh, so that's what we're going to select. Going to connect to the vehicle again. Okay. So vehicle voltage no less than 12 volts. Turn the ignition on, engine off. Release the electronic handbrake. So I need to release the handbrake um, in this case uh, before I can activate it. So that's what I'm going to do now quickly. Right, so the handbrake's released now, so that's all good. Back to the tool and press OK now. So you'll be able to hear the noise. They're winding themselves back. And you should come up with the, yeah, turn the ignition switch off, replace the brake pad and finish installation, then turn the ignition back on. Please click OK to proceed. Uh, yeah, so at this point you turn your ignition off so it doesn't drain the battery, do the job and then come back to the tool in a bit. So at this point uh, you should be able to release the caliper out of there. Yeah, there you go, it's moving a little bit. It still will be tight but you can use a screwdriver to take that out of there. Just be careful not to damage the seal. There we are, that's that off. So the pads are coming out. That's the other pad. So they're pretty much done. 
And now looking at the caliper, this is where you check the seal to make sure there's no damage there and make sure it's nice and free uh, for us to uh, turn them and uh, wind the caliper back in. Because some of them you can push back in, but this one you actually have to wind it back in. So that's fine. Um, at this point, you either put some cable ties to hold the weight of the caliper or leave it resting if you can. But there's a plug uh, for the electronic uh, control unit, so make sure you either um, unplug it or leave it there. In my case, I will leave it there because I don't like unplugging it. And just make sure you don't pull it too far so it doesn't damage anything. Uh, so now, uh, we will have to uh, remove the carrier in order to replace the discs. If you're just doing the pads, all you will have to do now is just wind that back in, clean um, the locators for the pads up to make sure it's nice and free, and just fit new pads in there. But we're gonna carry on. By the way, I forgot to tell you, uh, make sure you undo the screw while the caliper's still on there. It does help um, because it, you can, when the handbrake is on, you can undo it easier. Or if not, just tap it and use an impact gun or whatever to undo that. That's what I'm gonna do now. It's a torque 30, by the way, the tool that you need for it. So you should put it on there and give it a good tap to free it off. It does help. And then if you got an impact gun, use the impact gun. If you haven't, then just use the ratchet. There you go, it's coming undone now. I personally, I'd like to use the new screws or clean them up and put a bit of copper grease on them to make sure it comes out next time. So at this point, the disc should be free on there, uh, but obviously, like I said, you're not gonna be able to take it off. Right guys, so for this, I usually, I got a special kit, uh, the bed group kit, which is M14. Uh, the bolt that you got in there, so as you can see, that's where it's located. I do apologize, that, that's the one, that's the bottom one, and the top one is just behind that wire there. Uh, so two of them, you need to get them out of there, they will be really tight. Hence why I got a breaker bar here with the M14. Like I said, the link will be in the description below. So just crack them off and then you'll be able to get the carrier off. So I've loosened them up. Okay, now finger tight. I'm just going to take them out of there. There we are, both of them out. The carrier is already coming off and the disc coming off. There you go. So that's all good. That's all off. And as you can see, the disc uh, wasn't doing very well at all. That's not good. Uh, so hence why we're replacing it. At this point guys, I use a wire brush to clean around the hub to make sure it's nice and even for the new disc so it sits on there spot on. I put a bit of copper grease around here as well before I install it all. And like I said, on the carrier. Uh, so you got the gaps where the pads sit. And as you can see, they get corrosion and dirt there. So just use a file or wire brush to clean it all up to make sure when you put the new pads, you can slide them in and out on there because they need to be free to avoid any uneven wear. Right guys, so this is the tool that I'm gonna to be using. It will be in description uh, in description below, the link for it. Um, you got the adapter, you got different adapters for it. Uh, so that's the caliper retraction tool for the rear ones. So you literally position it in there, you find the locators, uh, there's different adapters because there's different cutouts on the actual piston. Right, this one's a bit better, it's a bit wider. So go on there, double check on there. As you can see, there's a little bit of um, liquid on there. It's not brake fluid, don't worry. It's me, I usually like to spray a bit of silicon spray or a bit of WD-40 just where the rubber joins uh, the piston uh, for it to be easier to slide it. I know some people don't like doing it, but some do, uh, it's up to you. It makes it easier so the rubber doesn't get stuck on the piston and stretches too much or rips. So adjust it on there turning either clockwise or anti-clockwise and start going in. In this case, it's anti-clockwise. So carry on pushing it in. Make sure the seal is nice and free. In this case, this one's actually going two ways. So you turn it anti-clockwise, it stops. Then you start turning clockwise. It carries on going more. But some of them are like that. Like I said, there's different models, different types. That should go a bit more. So now we're going clockwise until it stops. There we are, it's time to come to the end now. That's the way we have to fit them on here, on the passenger side. Uh, so the screw goes in there and it goes in one place. Uh, also before fitting them, make sure you clean them with the brake cleaner because sometimes they put grease 
oil on them to avoid corrosion. So I'll clean my one with the brake clean already. So get it on there. Make sure it sits nice and even in there. And get the screw back in there. We have copper grease on it. Do it up. Don't need to go crazy, but just do it up enough. I'm pretty sure the torque will be probably about eight newton meters or something like that. Right, I've cleaned my one up, so that's all good. Um, now it only goes in one way. So I'll cut it out the way. Get it in there, you can start them. Use your fingers, just make sure it's in the right place aligned with the hole. Like I said, the torque setting will be in the description below. I'll double check that for you on Autodata or something similar. Right, I've got my torque wrench in there. That's done up. And the same for the top one. Now with the brake pads guys, uh, you got two different brake pads, uh, one got little uh, dolls there, uh, the other one hasn't, uh, so that's the one that's going to go on the inside, so the ones that's facing the caliper, and this one's going to go on the outside, but I also got the covers to fit on there. So with the pads guys, I like to put a bit of copper grease on the bits that are going to be sliding, just a bit there, and the same on the other side. And at this point, make sure you got them the right way around. Check them, they're nice and free on there. The same for the inner one, that's nice and free. You got the spring on the inner one, so you're gonna be fighting against it, but it's fine. And like I said, the caliper is winding back in. So you should just slide on, there you go. And start with the top one or the bottom one, it's up to you. Start doing it up. And again, torque setting for this will be in the description below. So just push it in, make sure you got it nice and even in there because you don't want to cross thread it. So usually you can stay up by your fing with your fingers. So stay up a little bit. Once again guys, I do apologize for um, the lighting here. It's a little bit darker. I'm working on the light system, so it's gonna be brighter soon. So I'm not doing it completely tight, it's just done up. Uh, we're gonna push the bottom one in. You have to push it in a little bit to align it. And again, the same here. Start doing it up. That's better. The spring is compressed now. Like I said, the torque setting will be in the description below. Please do follow it. That's done up now as well. At this point, once you torque them up, you can put the spring back on. Right, so now obviously don't forget to put the caps back on in there. So that should still be nice and free. That's all good. And at this point, uh, like I said, put a bit of copper grease on them. And you have to locate one in there first, start it up, and then you kind of have to push the other one in and pull the spring back. Give it a tap, make sure it's all the way in there. And that's fine, so that's all done up. At this stage, all you have to do is check your brake fluid level, um, turn the ignition back on, and release the uh, handbrake mechanism using the diagnostic tool with the procedure, and you should hear it winding it out, and that should go back in place. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Right guys, so the ignition is back on. I'm gonna press OK. That's doing its thing. And at this point it should come up. Uh, please apply the parking brake. Yep, there we go. So now you have to get in the car and apply the parking brake and at that point it should be fine. Right, so I've just uh, turned the handbrake on inside the car. Press OK. And there's your final message, rear brake pad replacement completed. So press OK. And then the only thing you can do is go back and check if you got any fault codes, which you shouldn't. But from there onwards, you should be fine. Obviously, now uh, you only do this function once you replace both sides. 
I'm just done it now because I'm doing the video just to show you the other side is exactly the same so just do it when you replace the other side right guys so here we are I hope you enjoyed the video like I said only do the function the diagnostic tool once you replace both sides so that should be fine and from there you shouldn't get any faults if you do just clear the fault codes and you'll be fine uh, now don't forget when, before you drive away you have to pump the pedal to make sure it goes hard because obviously the piston was all the way in so check that Check your brake fluid level and just be careful when you first drive because the brake pads are going to be bedding in uh, so the brakes ain't going to be as great as they were before for the first 10 miles probably so just keep using the brakes and you'll see it will improve over time uh, but yeah hope you enjoyed the video like i said talk description uh, links for the tools and parts used will be in the description below so that's all there if you enjoyed the video give us a like comment below and have a good day bye